This Discover Butte Landscape Partnership Scheme has really been on the bubble since late 2004 and there's been a planning grant and a stage one and a development stage which was submitted at the end of January 2008 and we heard that we had been successful and got the funding in June 2008. We had our permission to start meeting on the 12th of August that year when our assessor Fiona Southern from the Heritage Lottery Fund came up to see us and we actually launched the project right here with Johnny Beatty. Right. One, two, three. So this is six, really six months into actually developing the projects and it's been a fantastic six months. Unbelievable really. We have managed to start projects in four of the five programme areas. We have spent around three, £350,000 out of our 2.8 million. At one point at the end of January, this landscape partnership scheme was sustaining slightly over 15 full-time equivalent jobs, which at this credit crunch time is really not insignificant in the beauty economy. And on top of that, we've had hundreds of volunteers out doing planting, out looking at archaeology, and get, involved in projects with you, schools. You get people clear. So, as project coordinator, I am utterly thrilled that it's gone so well and can only hope that will continue in the future. This bird hide was the first of our projects to be completed on the 24th of January this year and we're incredibly pleased with it. It was built by Arthur Hunter, a local builder on the island, to a design by John Saunders from Simpson and Brown and we opened it to the public on January the 24th. Andy Robinson from the RSPB came out and cut the ribbon. <laughs> And it's already been very well used, not just by local bird watchers, but by people coming onto the island as visitors to see what there is. And it's in such a stunning location. And hopefully everyone will agree that the design really doesn't detract at all from the location, but, but actually adds something to it. This is a really important landscape and for that reason we have included it in the Discover Butte Landscape Partnership Scheme. We have the Strad over on this side and St Ninian's Bay and the peninsula on the other side. We are rebuilding quite a lot of the dry stone walls in this area for their landscape character and their heritage value. And we have also been consolidating the monument on the point, which is an early Christian chapel. It's dedicated to St Ninian's, and St Ninian is the earliest named Christian saint in Scotland, earlier than St Blain, earlier than Columba, and it makes this area very, very important. But it's been important for a long number of years. It's still important today. The people who live here love it dearly and think it's the best place on the whole of Butte. But until quite recently, it had a, a herring fishery. And the other deserted building over on the peninsula is a herring fishing station and smokery. It's a very popular place, not only with locals, but with visitors all through the year, but particularly in the summer. And it is our intention to put an interpretive sign here with directions out to the point, explaining something about the history of this area and making sure that when people go to the point, they can see both the chapel and the herring smokery and not get the two mixed up. Here we are again in another really important landscape, an important landscape for Butte and important for the Landscape Partnership Scheme. It's probably the area of the island where there's the biggest concentration of archaeology. We've got Mesolithic, we've got Bronze Age, we've got an Iron Age hill fort, We've got the early Christian and all ages following that. What we've been doing here 
really since the start of the project is working on the dry stone walls that are such an important landscape feature here. I think you'll agree that our dry stained dikers have done a fantastic job here in repairing these walls around Donegal. Uh, Donegal is, is an I iconic and nationally significant fort and these walls really looked like broken teeth and how much more beautiful it looks today with that all done. We've not finished work in this landscape at all. We are reassessing the archaeology here and have even in the last couple of days been pinpointing some, some new sites. We're also going to put in some interpretations so that people can understand the landscape more when they come down here. And in the third year of the project, we've got some funding to improve the path down to this monument, which is really quite muddy at the moment. So there's still more to do. And this is the project that we decided to do first. It's the biggest capital project around 400, 420,000 pounds in total. It involves making this old tramway route, which runs from one side of the island to the other, into a hard top path so that walkers, cyclists, people with buggies can travel from one side to the other without having to walk on the road. What we've also done is taken the cows from this area. The cows used to walk down the tramway, on the road, it was incredibly muddy and it meant that any walkers had to walk in the mud. So now we've got separation. Cars, walkers and cows. The main contractor for this was John McMillan, speedy. Well, still is because it's not finished yet. But I think you'd agree that the standard of work really is very high. We're also doing some archaeological work right down at the other end so people will be able to see and understand some of the history of the area and the monuments that they'll see en route. We've got the Etrick Smiddy, which was operating until really quite recently. We've got the site of a deserted settlement. We've got a really evocative stone circle, St Colmax Stone Circle. And at the other end, a debatable structure called Knock and Rath, or Tom and Ra, or Woman's Grave, which is either a henge or a defended homestead. So come and have a look and decide for yourself.